main course is the most important part of the meal. Preparing them is quite meticulous to bring out the goodness, deliciousness, and the greatness of the food. If you describe them in one word, importante. Hi, I'm Daniel Likis. Hello, I'm Alessandro Panatoni. Welcome to Food 101. Food, 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 people. Let's talk about food. Well, Chevy, Valentine's is <laughs> finished. Yes, wow. thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it was busy, Valentine, busy. Busy, busy. But Chef and I are not finished yet about Valentine's. Because... No, not yet, not yet. <laughs> Yes, not yet, people, because we prepare for you uh, a main course that you will serve next year for your Valentine. So, wow. Yes. <laughs> That'd be awesome, right, Sethi? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> because, uh, like, like, every day is a love, love, love month. So, if you are interested to do it for the next month or next week for the top five chef alessandro main course for you can try <laughs> yes try it because it's one of a kind it's all about love love people Not absolutely i think i use it for a birthday no problem yes yeah, special location but yes. in, in celebration of love month we Chef Alessandro prepared for you this special top five main course for Love Month. Yes. So, Chefy, let's do at number five. So I want to start from the easy one and to go to the difficult one. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, number five. I was uh, thinking for a... I was thinking, that's a, one of my recipes, anyways. Strawberry risotto with the salmon caviar and balsamic vinegar drop and mint, fresh mint. Wow. <laughs> Level up, Chevy. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, it's a uh, nice, uh, uh, it's nice, nice uh, combination. It's nice risotto. It's, uh, a, well, it's for Valentine. So you got your, your strawberry in, in uh, you know, it's the love that you put it on and, uh, you know, it's a, a nice show to to give it to the partner. Absolutely. Yes, to your loved ones, to your friends, or to family members. Yes. So risotto, we discuss our second season. We talk about risotto, how to cook it, how yes. how to make it more delicious. As uh, Chef Alessandro is Italian executive chef. Uh, he give tips about how to make risotto delicious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Shafi, how are you going to do the strawberry risotto? Well, this one we're going to start like a classic risotto. We're going to, you know, uh, uh, chop your, our onion, you know, and uh, put a little bit of butter and uh, olive oil in the pot. You toast your rice. Uh, instead of using wine, we can use a nice uh, Prosecco or Champagne, if it's possible, give a little bit more refreshing flavor to the strawberry. And uh, then we, we add the uh, vegetable stock and we put uh, halfway, we're going to put the strawberry puree. And uh, we finish with a nice Parmesan cheese in. And uh, we go, you got your strawberry risotto, then we on the plate, uh, put some uh, salmon caviar, a few drops of uh, um, balsamic vinegar from Modena. Oh, yes, so <laughs> it, looks, it looks so fast, so simple, but it takes 30 minutes anyway. <laughs> yes. It's simple but delicious, yes. So, Shafi, uh, in techniques in uh, doing risotto mm. for the people did not listen to our episode for the second season. What yes. are your tips for making the risotto more starchy? Okay. Uh, the risotto, you got it toasted with the, with the 
onion and uh, olive oil first, of course. If you toast the rice, it's going to keep uh, the, um, make the, the rice uh, to release the starch a little bit of time and when make it nice and creamy. Yes, that was a trade secret of Chef Alessandro, <laughs> people. <laughs> yes. In cooking risotto, you do that and eat. The people will impress to you. Yeah, and make sure you use uh, 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 rice uh, supposed to be for risotto, like a carnaroli rice. It's very good. Yes, there's a lot of rice for risotto people. There's carnaroli, uh, vialone, there is so many. Yes, but there's... you know, you can use any kind of rice if you want to try, of course. But the best one, you have to use the specific for risotto. That's the best one. It's going to release a nice and creamy, you know, the starch is enough for, you know, for the sauce. It's going to be the, a completely a different kind of, uh, you know, impact when you eat it. Yes, here in Canada, uh, I think our Borio is the widely used. Yes, but I find uh, even a Carnaroli too, uh, import from Italy, yes. They are one of a kind uh, types of rice, because mm -hmm. if you use the regular rice, it's different people mm -hmm. you yes. should do a chef said canaroli or arborio or there's a lot of uh kind of uh, rice that you're going to use for risotto yes but even the shape is different you know for the for the rice so, you know the white rice that you can find at the store sometimes it can be you know the long rice so you know you don't want to do you don't want to use a basmati or you don't want to use a jasmine because it's a little bit flavor uh, as a rice uh, but for risotto, yeah, you can use a, a brown uh, brown sh uh, rice if you want it, you know, just yeah. for change. If and for the budget, right? Yes, Shari? of course, even for the budget. We try to calculate everything, you know, to make it easy for everybody to enjoy the same recipe with a different, uh, you know, uh, different uh, item to put it in. Yes, especially today, Chef, the inflation rate is high. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, everybody getting high, but the salary is getting down. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> it's not proportion, people. So if people like in a lower, uh, in the lower society or in the medium society, it cannot, it's hard for them to adapt what is really happening to the world. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's supposed to be equal. If the inflation rate is coming up, you should have also uh, the second thought that, okay, let's do backup for the people that working so hard that their money is <laughs> not enough or tight enough. So we are calling the government, please. <laughs> now, uh, the grocery went up like crazy now. It's, uh, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> and it's getting higher and higher. So mm. it's it's outside the topic, but <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But I think it's a, it's a everybody's topic now, eh? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it's very bad topic because we are calculating each of the recipe that we're doing with chef. We want you to afford uh, of those uh, recipe that we're doing. So instead of risotto, you can do brown rice. Oh, instead of uh, butter, you can use margarine. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we still recommend uh, the high quality products. But if you cannot afford, we have the other alternative. Right, Chevy? Yes, absolutely. Actually, we should do one day, uh, uh, one episode with uh, different item for a different recipe, you know, to adjust exactly. everybody. It would be nice. That'd be awesome. Yes. yes. So, Shafi, where are you going to put strawberry risotto? Uh, well, uh, it would be nice, a nice flat white plate. It would be nice because it's already colored with the strawberry. It's nice and uh, uh, kind of uh, pink, uh, kind of pink, red, red, pink uh, uh, color. So, it's very nice. And then you get the mint, you get the drop of the balsamic. It's a kind of a black almost. So, it's very nice to see. Yes, that'd be awesome. Fabulous yes. presentation. So, Chevy, let's go to number four. Oh, number four. I was thinking about pan-seared scallop and shrimp with a truffle cream sauce. 
Wow, very rich. <laughs> well, it's Valentine, come on. Uh, it's Valentine. Let's but I, I can find you the variation for this one too. Eh? <laughs> okay, yes, definitely. We need to have the other variation. Well, I make it. I make it easy because it's uh, you know every most of the people can do the you know they can see you know scallop and shrimp on the frying pan anyway. It's uh, it's not that uh, that hard, you know. Uh, maybe you can make the mistake to cook a little bit longer, maybe a little bit tougher, but you know, with the experience or with the you know training, people can you know sear the scalp and the shrimp in the right way, you know. Yeah, so I was thinking, you know, make uh, you know the nice three scallops and three beautiful shrimp, you know, pan, pan sear with a nice butter and uh, garlic butter and parsley, and then with this nice. Tr- that you just dripping around the, on the plate it would be very very nice then the truffle you can find the uh, uh, truffle oil you can find the truffle paste that you can mix with the cream sauce yes so That's... sometimes uh, it's uh, the truffle oil is maybe cheaper than the truffle regular truffle of course because the truffle is very it's very expensive but give at least the flavor just to show off you know <laughs> yes <laughs> it's it's something if you put use a truffle oil, it's really you can smell it or you can feel the taste. Yeah. It's something that it's really different. Yes. Actually, you can, you can uh, uh, mix uh, some mushroom and uh, blend it, add the, the truffle oil, and then you put the cream. And it looks like a brand truffle on it. As a, yes. a secret, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the trade secret of Chef Alessandro. <laughs> it's one of a kind. <laughs> yeah, but it's a it's a simple it's a simple plate, so it's very it's not that hard, to, you know. So I was thinking, I was thinking, oh, the uh, how I can make something, you know, very nice and uh, tasty with uh, a good budget and uh, you know and make uh, make it easy to do at home. That's the thing. Yes. So, Chefy, in uh, searing the scallop, what is the secret? Well, the scallop, make sure that uh, you warm up very good the frying pan because you don't want to touch on the on the frying pan. Make sure you got no stick frying pan, that's for sure. You know? And, yes, uh, yes it's got to be very hot. I like to just sear and then finish in the oven because, uh, you know, you give it a little bit, you know. I don't want it to cook. I don't want it dry. Yes. And, uh, shrimp that are very fast to cook anyway, even the scallop. Depends on yes. the size, eh, of course. Definitely, yes. And I, I'm watching this TV series, uh, Hell Kitchen, and all these cook, uh, uh, Chef Ramsey is getting mad because they know they don't know how to cook <laughs> the scallops. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love Ramsey anyway. <laughs> <It's so funny. laughs> yes, it's an amazing chef. So, I observe that uh, Chef Ramsey always check how you cook the scallops. scallops. <laughs> <laughs> so people, uh, listen to Chef Alessandro, your pot must be very hot. Yeah, the scallop, they're very, uh, it's a nice and uh, soft, fresh fish anyway. So it's, uh, it's uh, easy and fast to cook. So you don't want to overcook. You want to keep it nice and moist as a fish. Yeah. Yes. So, Chefy, how what do you think? How many minutes? Like uh, depend on well, depend on the size, of course. Yeah. You know? So it's like medium size, like medium size. Well, I would say a couple three. of minutes. You know, they just yes. gotta sear both sides, and uh, that's it. Yes, because uh, once you overcook, it's like a rubber too. Oh right? uh, no, you can use as a <laughs> tennis ball for that. Eh? <laughs> Yes, it's so delicate. Eventually, you can play, you know, ping pong or you know, <laughs> or tennis at home <laughs> with your partner. <laughs> That's why Chef Ramsey is very mad, and then he just throw all the scallops. Yeah, yeah, for sure, he's gonna throw to you <laughs> behind you. <no? laughs> so, Safi, how would you do the pan sealed scallop with truffles? How I will do? Yes. Well, I'm gonna. How would you assemble it? Of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna sear with a nice uh, butter and uh, garlic, like I said before, with the uh, and parsley. The frying pan is gonna be hot, like I say. Sear it, 
uh, see the shrimp uh, just on the plate, maybe a long plate would be very nice. Long plate, put some fresh parsley around it, and then drizzle the truffle cream sauce on top. Oh, yes. Here we go. Que bono! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, which plate do you want to prefer to use? Ah, that would be nice. A nice long tile, rectangular would be nice. Oh, wow, yes. Yeah, and then you got the orange, you got the white, you got the white cream sauce, maybe a black plate, my favorite, you know. <laughs> <laughs> black plate, yes. So that you can see the combination of the white and the black on the plate. Yes. That'd be awesome, Safi. So let's do the number three. Number three, I was thinking uh, Barolo wine beef stew with uh, maybe a server with polenta or mashed potato besides, yes. Wow. Barolo, and uh, we can change the wine, of course. Eh? Yes. Barolo. <laughs> so that to be Barolo. <laughs> <laughs> can I use red wine instead? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, uh, Barolo, it's red. <laughs> but, you know, of course, better is the wine, better come out the beef stew. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. But yeah. I was thinking, you know, many people have a uh, uh, slow cooker at home. Oh, so yes. For people that they work in the morning and they never have time to make a uh, fast dinner for the night, you know, they can start with the, you know, with a slow cooker. When they come at home, it's going to be ready. The stew will yeah. be amazing. Definitely. One of a kind, people. Yes. So what are the ingredients, Safi, for the Barolo? Uh, for the beef stew, uh, you need, uh, of course, uh, beef. It must be a shoulder or a, a chuck meat or a rump. Uh, eventually, if you want even a brisket, you can use it. Yes. As a part of the, of the beef. And then uh, you need uh, a mirepoix of uh, onion, celery, and carrot. Uh, some rosemary. And uh, I usually I like to season it and uh, leave it in the wine with the mirepoix for one night. So the, the meat is going to get all the flavor from the wine. Yes, that would be awesome. Yes. Then the next day I dry up the meat and I pass in the flour and I sear all side. Yes. Uh, that's the good thing. If you marinate the chicken before you cook, as according to what I read, it will remove the toxic that from the meat. Mm -hmm. So always, people, if you doing a cooking a meat before ahead, you need to marinate it so that it helps to tenderize and remove the toxic from the meat. Absolutely. And uh, so when, after I dry up, I uh, pass in the flour and then I sear all the sides. So you can cut. Uh, cubes big cubes or uh, like you know four ounce cube where you can have a big size no and uh and then after that i put a if you have a slow cooker you can use a slow cooker otherwise you can just put in the oven in a, in a nice uh, uh roast pan or, or even you can cook on the stove very slowly because it's going to take at least three hours to cook yes that's true so you yeah. after you put the meat inside the, the, this uh, pot and then you put uh, all the wine that you use for the marinade and uh, you add even the vegetable that you marinate together and uh, you cook very, very slowly, you know, for three hours and so with the flour it's going to give uh, the nice uh, thick sauce and uh, the meat is going to be so, so soft. Yes, soft and delicious. Yes, I love I love the beef stew. <laughs> yes, definitely. So, uh, people, it's really very important that you sear uh, the meat because one reason is to uh, close the meat from uh, the blood coming out. Mm -hmm. Right, Chappie? Yeah. This, this is important so that it keeps the blood inside the meat. And then blood is a part of the tissue of animals. So if you cook together, it makes more the meat more delicious because it's part of being in the muscle or in the 
uh, meat of the animals. Correct. So it become more delicious. Absolutely. So, Chef, for the Barolo wine plate, do you want to use? Well, for the Barolo stew, you can use uh, uh, a nice uh, flat uh, plate, yes, because it depends what kind of uh, side dish you're going to put it beside. So I was thinking maybe a polenta, you can put in the middle of the plate the polenta, and you can put the Barolo on top, the, the, the beef stew on top. Oh, uh, wow. Or eventually you can use a mashed potato if you don't like polenta. Uh, because not everybody likes polenta. It's a, you know, it's a little bit smelly, uh, you know. But anyway, you can use mashed potato. And you can put the same thing. You can put the uh, beef stew on top. And then you just drizzle the sauce around on top of the, the meat. It would be amazing anyway. A, yes, little but... bit, a little bit green just for decoration on top, like uh, pea tenders or uh, some sprout, you know. Would be very cool. Yes, for the Canadian they like mashed potato. For the Italian, for sure, it polenta. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, let's give a little background how to make polenta, shall we? Ah, polenta. Hey, polenta. It's so easy, yeah, right? Easy way. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is an easy way for polenta. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> If I, the first time I do polenta, I, I, it really messed me because uh, this first time I do it and I did not put lots of water in it. And then, of course, <laughs> polenta is like rice. So. And uh, <laughs> if they tell you, you know, and now there is on, in, the, in uh, uh, any store you can find now polenta you cook in five minutes. Oh, my time <laughs> to have the polenta was uh, like a one hour cooking over there. I can remember my grandmother, my mom changing. My grandpa was going on and they turned this big pot with the polenta. And for one hour, and to my mom or my dad was going over there and say, oh, okay, now it's thick enough. <laughs> it was really <laughs> hours for the polenta. But, you know, it was amazing. It was, really was delicious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's still something else. It's yes. like it's big. There's a big difference of cooking in a long uh, period of time than it's just like instant. <laughs> yes, now now it's uh, it's unbelievable what you can find there. Uh. Yeah, instant polenta. Oh wow, Shafi. Yes. <laughs> so Shafi, what's traditional uh, procedure in making polenta? Well, it's very simple. You just make uh, um, uh, uh, boiling water with a little bit of olive oil, a little salt. That's what I, my, my parents was doing all the time. And then you just, uh, a little bit of time, you add this uh, cornmeal, practically. It's uh, polenta, it's cornmeal anyway. Yes, And corn. uh, that's it. And you cook it and to get thick. Uh, you keep and put it on and to, you know, it's getting uh, uh, thicker and thicker and thicker and you can spread on the plate. I still remember my mom who was trying on the plate if it was, uh, you know, stay attached and doesn't go down like a liquid. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes and you're just uh, constantly stirring it and stirring it because uh, uh, probably it will burn if you will not stir it continuously uh, we can say that the polenta is a kind of like a porridge for, <laughs> for Italian yes. <laughs> porridge <laughs> it's a really nice porridge and yeah. yeah yeah. the good thing about polenta the after when you got left over and it's getting hard of course it's getting very hard after but you can cut it and you can grill, you can deep fry. And uh, actually, if you make a very thin slice of polenta, you probably make, uh, make tortillas, you know, the, the, <laughs> the potato chips. The... Yes. <laughs> because it, it's, it probably has the same thing. It's one of a kind. Yeah. Polenta is a versatile part. Yes. Same with mashed potato, I should say. Potato yeah. can do variation like uh, croquette. Uh, what else you can do? Pork potato, roasted potato, Dutch potato, gnocchi, like, gnocchi. Yeah, gnocchi. <laughs> <laughs> of course, gnocchi. Uh, polenta is like the same with uh, potatoes. So yeah. they are versatile in terms of starch that you can use in your main course. Absolutely. So, Shavi, let's do at number two. Number two. Number two, I was thinking, uh, poached salmon filet. 
with the black ink risotto and sea urchin cream sauce. Oh, wow. <laughs> we go <Really>? fancy, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking, you know, for the color, it's a very attractive color. That's the kind of uh, uh, the plate that I usually do at work sometimes, no? And, uh, and then you got the orange from the salmon filet. And then you got the, the black on the bottom, it's the risotto. Then you got the sea urchin cream sauce. It's a little kind of orange, uh, white orange uh, sauce that go around. A little bit of green. Oh, it's beautiful to see. Beautiful. Yes, definitely. It's one of a kind. So how would you do the urchin, uh, urchin sauce? Sorry. The, ah, sea urchin sauce. Uh, yeah. it's, uh, okay, first you got a, a, a olive oil, garlic, anchovies, then you need the sea, fresh, fresh urchin, of course. Then you need a little bit of tomato sauce, and uh, then you need the cream sauce, uh, the 25% uh, cream, and uh, a little bit of white wine. So now I'm going to explain everything how to do it. Very <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. So first you, so you, you get a pot, you put a, you know, the garlic with the olive oil, then you put a little bit of anchovies to make it this salt. Then you put some white wine. Then uh, you put the tomato, the tomato sauce. Then you add the cream. Then you can uh, uh, pass everything on the chinois or the uh, strainer if you want it, just to don't add the seeds from the tomato in the, your sauce. And then you boil up again and you add the siurchin. So the flavor of the siurchin, because they're going to cook right away in one minute, don't even the siurchin. They're very fast. So the flavor of the siurchin is going inside the sauce. And uh, you just... Uh, Shut it off, put it on the side, and let it infuse all the flavor of the urchin. That's it. Yes. It's a very good sauce that you can use even for pasta. I was using so much when I was in Japan, and I use sometimes here uh, in, uh, in Toronto. So, Safi urchin is a seashell that's found anywhere, right? Uh, yes, you can find it. I, I find it in, in Canada. Yes, they're coming from uh, West Coast. Is it expensive, Chevy? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's not that bad because eventually you can find even frozen. Of course, fresh the best. But uh, most of the people, maybe they prefer to use, to eat as a, for sushi or, you know, in uh, the Japanese cuisine. But I like to make a pasta sauce because it's uh, fantastic. Yes, definitely. So... Instead of a sea urchin, Sophie, what uh, my alternative to you? Alternative on sea urchin, yes, we can do. Hmm, let me think here. Yeah. Can I do oyster sauce? <laughs> uh, eventually, yes, you can. Yes, oh, yeah. uh, no big oyster, maybe a small oyster, but eventually, you can use a uh, uh, mussel or you can use uh, clams. Or, oh, oh. Okay. Actually, you can find that uh, even if you got some crab meat, you can use the crab meat. Oh, yes, definitely. That, yeah, that would be nice too. Yes, that'd be awesome. So, plate you can use for this. Uh, this one definitely is going to be a white plate because you got so much color because you have to make even the black risotto. So, you, you need the, the black ink from the squid. And you yes. can make a, a really black result. So you got the black in the you know, on the on the bottom of the fish. So you need the white plate for sure. Oh yes. So what will be the starch for this one, Safi? So for the for the plate is going to be the starch was going to be the black risotto. Okay, black risotto. That'd yes. be awesome. It's not and... very hard to make it because it's uh, you know you just uh, follow the same recipe like we did before at the at the. Strawberry risotto, but instead to put the strawberry, you just add the uh, squid ink inside. Oh, well, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So, Shabby, um, if you recommend this for uh, a cheaper, cheaper uh, uh, ingredients. Well, cheaper ingredient, yes, we can do, yes, we can change the sauce, absolutely. Definitely. So... People, eat. I think the most the thing is going to be the the uh, the in this recipe. Sea urchin, yes. But urchin. if you don't like the black risotto, I 
and you can change just with the white rice anyway on the bottom. It still is going to do the impact. Yes. And you know, Shafi, that if uh, it's hard to take a sea urchin. Uh, I saw a documentary how uh, these people taking sea urchin. Uh -huh. it's, it's not easy, people. <laughs> That's why it's expensive. <laughs> you know, I love sea urchin, but I can't eat it because I'm allergic on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> no severe allergy, but uh, you know I got my rash if I get it. <laughs> if I, if oh, I it. okay. So, but I yeah. love it. I love it. I love it completely. I have so, to yeah. taste it because uh, I'm working in the kitchen, so I need to know the taste. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for seafood chef or sea urchin? No, no, no. Only for the sea urchin, I got the, this problem. If it's raw. Oh. Okay. If it's raw, I got the reaction. If it's just cooked, it's not that, that bad anyway. So, Shafi, let's do your number one. Oh, number one. It's got to be a beef tenderloin, of course. You know? oh, <laughs> I said it's beef wagyu. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I left it blank that part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I want to say, okay, let's talk about Angus beef, <laughs> wagyu <Yes>. beef. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. But, yes, uh, definitely. I think it's uh, going to be a best things to you know to show off. Uh, you know, the nice dinner, Valentine's dinner, nice uh, uh, bacon wrap, uh, beef tenderloin uh, with uh, a nice red wine sauce reduction. And if you want, you can put even a nice uh, rock lobster steam on top. It would be amazing. Oh yes, I. I thought, Shafi, it's a culatello wrap with beef tenderloin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, with culatello, we did appetizer, so we do, <laughs> we're going to do, do bacon. Uh, we can do pancetta. Oh, actually, we can do, we can do uh, lardo. Oh, yes. Yeah. Lardo. Yes, <laughs> one of a kind, too. Uh, so, Shafi... Can you tell us to our beginners what is the difference of pancetta and lardo? Well, uh, probably... well pancetta is the belly of the of the pork. Mm -hmm. Yes, it uh, uh, can be can be um, uh, cured or can be smoked. Yes, and, uh, uh, lardo it's um, it's a thick part of. Um, just of like the, most of the time with the cheek or stuff like that. Yes, the cheek fat of the of the pork. Yes, and uh, and uh, for uh, for the for the lardo, you can slice very thin, and uh, you can wrap even the scallops. Or you know, uh, in Italy we do you use for a uh, even for a uh, vegetable wrap the vegetable, and then you just. Uh, Pan fry at the moment, you know, and it's got a crunchy because it's lard, of course, it's, uh, it's the fat part. Yes. So, uh, so, Shafi, what will be your starts for beef tenderloin wrap up with bacon? Uh, the starch for the beef tenderloin it can be uh, any, any kind you like. It can be mashed potato, it can be uh, roast potato, it can be scallop potato, whatever you like, you can put it. Yes, uh, it's very versatile. Beef can be a partner with any kind of starch. Yeah, no, it's so it's so easy to accommodate the for the for the beef tenderloin. You can put any kind, even for uh, even for uh, um, uh, for vegetable. You can put any kind of vegetable beside. It's yes, a nice, it's a nice match. Yes, and if you are. Uh, really uh hoping for a high-end vegetable so do let's say uh brussels sprout or broccoli or cauliflower gratinate or something that beautiful on the plate. Uh, colorful uh, or yes absolutely but if you have no budget or something you are thinking for less well spinach is good oh yes but you can change even the meat if you want it. You can change uh, from the beef. You can go on the uh, maybe pork fillet if you want it, or yes. a veal fillet, or yeah. uh, if you want to go chicken, you can use chicken. 
chicken breast. Absolutely, chicken breast wrapped with the with the lardo with the bacon. Absolutely, I will uh, I will eat it. <laughs> yes, que bueno, as they said. Yes. So, Shafi, before we go out, uh, we go to our uh, two. Let's do the recap. Absolutely. Um, I will say a shout out to the people listening in Canada, Shafi. Yeah, we are <laughs> we are number five on the list on the Apple chart. Fantastic. Really, yes, thank you so much, people. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, Canada for listening to us, and of course Cyprus. Wow! Thank you so much. So thank you, Cyprus, for uh, listening to us. We are at number fifty-nine, Chevy. Wow! Fantastic. Yes, Vietnam at number fifty. Oh wow! Thank you. Goodness. Thank you, Vietnam. Philippines at one twenty-eight. Wow! Yes. Thank you so much. And Taiwan at number fifty-two. Wow! Fantastic. Sri Lanka at number 25. Wow. And this one, Chefi, I can't imagine that we are number one. Guess which country we are number one on the Apple chart. <laughs> wow. Which one? <laughs> well, the capital is Rabat. <laughs> oh. Morocco. Morocco, number one. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Morocco. I was so surprised that we are number one over there on Apple charts. Fantastic. And, and uh, we assure you that our podcast is bigger, better, and bolder. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you so much for your support. Thank Warm you. Support. Thank you. So, Safi, let's do the recap of your top five main course for Valentine's or for the Love Love Month. Absolutely. Okay, with number five, we're going to go with strawberry risotto with salmon caviar, balsamic vinegar drops, and mint. Mm, mamma mia, so delicious. <laughs> Sounds good, eh? Sounds good. So, at number four, Safi. We got pan seared scallops and shrimp with truffle cream sauce. Yes, this one of a kind, people. Yes. This is Chef Alessandro high end recipe for Valentine's. Yes. So at number three, Chefy. We got Barolo wine beef stew. Yes. The, we discuss uh, lots of alternative if you cannot afford or the budget is... The wine, they can change the yes. meat. No problem. Yes. So at number two, Chevy. We got poached salmon filet with the black risotto ink and sea urchin cream sauce. Yes. Delicious. Yes. <laughs> at number one. Number one, bagel wrap uh, beef tenderloin with uh, red wine reduction. And if you want, some nice rock lobster with a garlic butter on top. Yes, que bono. As they <laughs> <said>. <laughs> yes. So those are the top five high-end recipe of Chef Alessandro uh, for Valentine's. But if you want to try next week or next month, it's up to you, people. But... Absolutely. Try, try, try. Don't stop. Try. Yes. Try and try until you succeed, as they said. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Shabi, uh, thank you for your time. No, always welcome. What are you, people? See you soon. Bye-bye.